This is the course Mechanical Vibrations. Today we will talk about measurements instruments. My name is Carmen Miller Gardner, and figures and content is adapted from the textbook Rao. You can find more information in the chapter 10, section 10.3, Vibrations Pickup. The increasing demand of higher productivity and economical design are leading to high operating speeds of machinery and efficient use of materials to lightweight structures. These trends make the occurrence of resonance conditions more frequent during the operation of machinery and reduce the reliability of the systems. Therefore, the periodic measurement of vibration characteristics of machinery and structure become essential. The measurement of the natural frequency structures of machines is useful in selecting the operational speed or nearby equipment to avoid resonance conditions. The importance of measuring vibrations. Measurements of vibrations ensure adequate safety mark. Selecting the operational speed of nearby machinery may avoid resonance conditions. Mechanical models for theoretical values may not represent actual values due to assumptions. Therefore, the experimental measurements are very important. Measuring frequency of vibrations and the forces are necessary in the design process and operation of active vibration and isolation system. Measuring vibrations is also used for identification of characteristics of the systems in terms of mass, stiffness, and damping. Information about ground vibrations due to earthquake, fluctuation wind velocities on structures, random vibration of ocean waves, roughness are very important in the design structures, machines, oil platform, and vehicle suspension system. There are several steps in the vibration measurement process. The first step is to that the motion or the dynamic force or the vibrating body is converted into an electrical signal by vibration transducer or pickup. These transducers transform changes in mechanical quantities such as displacements, velocity, accelerations, or force into changes in electrical quantities, such as voltage or current. A signal conversion instrument is used to amplify the signal to a required value. Usually, the output signals, voltage or current of the transducers is too small to be recorded directly. The output from the signal conversion instrument can be presented on a display unit for visual inspection or recorded by a recording unit or storage in a computer for later use. The data can then be analyzed to determine the desired vibration characteristics of the machine or structure. What we are going to analyze in this class this first step which is measuring the motion or the dynamic force of the vibrating body. The vibration pickups are instruments to measure vibration commonly known as seismic instruments. As you see in this figure, they consist of a mass, spring and damper system mounted or a vibrating body. The vibratory motion is measured by finding the displacement of the mass relative to the base. One end of the spring and one end of the bashboard will have the same motion as the vibratory motion that we want to measure. X is the absolute value of the motion of the mass. But what is recorded here in the instrument is the relative motion between the mass and the cage. If we do our free body diagram, we have the weight, the force of the spring, and it will be the constant of the spring times the relative motion between the two ends of the spring, the constant of the damper times the relative velocity between the two ends of the damper, and that's equals to the mass times acceleration. Remember that the mass and acceleration is always an absolute value. Remember that we don't include the weight 
because we are measuring x respect to the static equilibrium position and the weight cancels out with the static deflation of the spring. Since we want to measure the relative motion in the instrument, we will do a change of variable and we will name c equals to x minus y, damper times c dot plus k times c dot, and we put m c to those in the other side of the equation to get the typical second order differential equation that we always saw. Now we substitute y to dot by the second derivative of the displacement that we want to measure, and we introduce that into the equation and we get this expression right here. This is the non-homogeneous term of my second order differential equation, and that will lead us to our particular solution. You recall that the particular solution will be the magnitude of the force divided by the constant of the spring multiplied by the amplification factor, times sine of omega t minus a phase angle. And this here, k of m, becomes the natural frequency, so this here becomes r squared. So we have that the solution that we will be measuring is the amplitude of the displacement times r squared times the magnification factor sine omega t minus the phase angle. Therefore, the amplitude that we record divided by the amplitude that we measure will be this factor right here. Now that we are familiar with this type of response where we get the graph r squared times the magnification factor, let's relate this type of graph to the different types of instruments that you can use to measure vibrations. We have mainly two types of instruments. We have the vibrometers that measure displacement of the vibrating body, the natural frequency of the instrument is much smaller than the frequency of vibration that we are trying to measure. Work for very high values of R, the frequency we want to measure is at least three or four times the natural frequency of the system. And as you see, for those values, R squared M tends to one. Therefore, if we look at the response right here, if this number is one, what we are measuring right here, which is C, will be exactly equals to y. Vibrometers measure displacement. In the case of accelerometers, the natural frequency of the instrument is much higher than the frequency that we are trying to measure. So we will be in very low values of r, and then for r equals zero, this multiplication tends to zero, but m tends to 1. So we will be analyzing the factor m for those type of instruments. And as you see, since m is equals 1, the relation between what we measure right here and what we want to measure is equals to 1 over the natural frequency squared times the acceleration of the base. Let's talk first about the vibrometers. As we said, the vibrometers measure displacement of the vibrating body and they work for very high values of R, meaning that the frequency that we are trying to measure is much bigger than the natural frequency of the instrument. We said that this R is greater than 3. The relative displacement between the mass and the base is essentially the same as the displacement of the base. We are recording the same that we are measuring. To obtain a very low natural frequency of a system, the mass must be very high and a very low stiffness of the spring. That results in a very bulky instrument. If the value of R is not sufficiently high, meaning that the frequency is not too much higher than the natural frequency, and we are in this zone of a graph, then we have to use the whole equation to calculate this factor. We cannot just assume that the factor is equals to one. Since we are working frequency ratio above one, the phase angle is 180. 
for theta equals to zero, but is greater than 90 for any other theta. So this, the recorded displacement lags behind the displacement being measured by a phase angle and by a time it equals to the phase angle divided by the frequency. This lag is not important if the displacement consists of a single harmonic because we can calculate this angle. Let's continue with the accelerometers. This type of instruments are used to measure much lower frequency than the natural frequency of the instrument. So we will be placed here where R tends to be zero and therefore M tends to be one. R squared over M goes to zero, but the denominator here will become one. As you see in this graph, which is a enlargement of the graph M for small values of R, meaning from zero to 0 0.6, and values of theta between 0 0.65 and 7, those curves right here, the blue one and the green one, the value for M lies between 0 0.96 and 0 0.04. So that for those values, the error of assuming M equals one will be much smaller. This type of instrument measures the acceleration of the vibrating body except it will have a lag or phase angle. The time by which the record lags, the acceleration is given by this time, which is the phase angle divided by the frequency. If the acceleration consists of a single harmonic component, that angle is not important in the sense that we can easily measure the angle. Since R is small, the natural frequency of the instrument has to be very large compared to the frequency we want to measure. Then the mass needs to be very small and the constant of the spring has to be very large. That requires a short spring. So usually the accelerometers are very small in size as a different as the vibrometers where are very bulky. To do their small size and high sensitivity, the accelerometers are the preferred vibrations instrument. Lastly, we will talk about the vibration exciters. The vibration exciters or shakers can be used in several applications such as determining the dynamic characteristics of machine and structures and fatigue testing of materials. The vibrating exciters can be mechanical, electromagnetic, electrodynamic, or hydraulic types. So we give a shaker to, for example, these vehicles, and with measuring the vibration response, we can measure the equivalent constants for the spring and the dampers. The same, for example, for this wing of the airplane. If we give an initial displacement or we excite the system with a harmonic, we will be able to measure, for example, the equivalent damping of the system.